Hey everybody, Daryl Holly with Exquisite Exotics here. This week's video, we're going to go over how we do lay boxes for our crested geckos because breeding season for crested geckos is coming up soon. So we thought this would be a useful video for anybody who does crested geckos and maybe it's your first breeding season and you don't know how to do lay boxes or uh, it's not your first breeding season, but you'd like to see our take on it. So uh, with, without you know further elongating the videos like we always do, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. Crested Gecko Lay Boxes. Uh, we'll try to make this simple. So we just use GLAD containers. Um, these are the, let's get the focus there, 8 cups, 64 ounces, uh, 1.89 liter GLAD containers. So you should be able to find those. Uh, I think we pick ours up at like Walmart. So anywhere the GLAD containers are sold. <laughs> and then, um, you know, they're going to come with lids. The nice thing about these lids are they seal really tight and they clean well. So the first thing you're going to need to do Let's take your lid and put it here and like magic <laughs> cut out the center of your lid so we uh, use a hole saw and just cut it out with one big cut you could just cut it out with a razor blade um, wherever whatever you have to cut mm -hmm. we just cut and then uh, we doctored it up because yep. we want to make it smooth yep so I was gonna get to that too oh, sorry <laughs> um, so we just cut that that press part for the press and press and like vacuum seal part we just cut right at the bottom of that edge and cut out that center circle and like Holly was about to mention, uh, we take a lighter, just because it's easy, and just uh, kind of burn the edge. And it, what it does is it makes a right, nice, soft, round edge for the geckos so they don't cut themselves. So I know, totally DIY here, right? So now we have a glad container. And you might be wondering why we have two glad containers. So um, the reason we use two for every lay box is we set up our tubs with this in the bottom. And then we put our lay box inside. And a lot of times we have decorations or stuff that is sitting against these tubs. This allows us to take out the actual lay box, check the eggs, clean it, um, do whatever we need to do with the lay box and not disturb how we have our tub set up uh, for the geckos because this bottom tub stays in place and then we just put the lay box back inside. So if you want an easy way, like if you're worried about having to disturb something because of where your lay box needs to come in and out of, that's an easy way to do it. Uh, if you don't have that problem, if you just got like tons of space in your uh, tubs or setups to put little lids on or whole bowls on the ground, don't worry about it. You can just put the bowl straight on the ground. We use a two tub setup. All right. What we're going to put inside, so we're going to use plain old sphagnum moss, okay? I'm sure you've seen this around, you can buy it in bulk, you can buy it at uh, Pet Online stuff. Uh, we get ours in big things from Josh's Frogs, they have it, some of the cheapest. Um, and then, you're also going to need, uh, oh, oh, it's, it's kind of hard to see, <clears throat> there we go, uh, sphagnum peat moss. So, we buy this in big, big bags, uh, I forget what this is, a 50 pound bag I think maybe? Maybe, uh, maybe 40. Maybe I don't know. 40. I can carry um, it, so it's not we get, ridiculous. Yeah, it's not too bad, but it's pretty big. Uh, we get this at our uh, local nursery, so um, it's pretty cheap. I think this whole big bag less like, than 20. Uh, yeah, I was thinking really? it's like 8.99 or something for it this big very, bag. Very, very cheap, but we got it like I don't know how long ago. Yeah. So. Check your nursery um, for that kind of stuff before you just automatically buy. And not that I don't want you to buy from retailers, um, but I mean, save money where you can, right? Yeah. So you're looking for sphagnum peat moss, and you need to make sure that it, it doesn't have any additives. Uh, if you look at ours, I forget where it's labeled, but we like found organic. like it, it was uh, like no additives. It's just just sphagnum peat moss. Mm -hmm. So make sure no additives in there. You don't want any chemicals in it. You just want plain sphagnum peat moss. And then you're going to mix those two. So you're going to mix the sphagnum peat moss with the regular sphagnum moss, uh, and you're going to shoot for what we do is about three quarters of the the peat moss to about a quarter of the sphagnum. And what the sphagnum there, Holly, you can see, yeah, you can see it. What the sphagnum it. does, uh, go ahead and start filling that bowl sure. while I'm talking. Um, what the sphagnum does is it, it A, helps hold the moisture in the peat moss really well. Uh, sphagnum's also antimicrobial, so it helps, you know, if you have any worry about any mold or anything. So uh, make sure that you don't get mold in the bowl. Cool. Good? It looks pretty good. Right, it's gonna so go down a little that, bit with the water. Bring that up here. I'll show people. So, pull it up. So, nope, nope, to the side. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, we fill it pretty full to start. So, I'm going to let Holly you know, go ahead and put water in that. So, now mm -hmm. you got to get water in it. Um, what you're shooting for here, and this is our, our beautiful water cart that we use in all of our <laughs> reptile rooms. Um, 
This, the, the peat moss doesn't quickly absorb water, so you got to do some mixing and kind of hold it underwater a little bit Ooh. to make it work. Yep. You're going to make a mess. Wanna, Be yeah. prepared to make a mess. That's why I have a glove on, so I'm not gross today. You see how it's not absorbing quickly, uh, but I'm going to let Holly mix why I, I chit-chat with you guys. So the consistent you see you're shooting for here is you don't want mud. You don't want it to be sopping wet, uh, but you do want everything to be uh, moist, damp. damp, and you want it to stay damp. You don't want to let it dry out because these eggs require humidity, uh, but you don't want them, the eggs to be like sitting in water either. Now we check our lay boxes every day, so the eggs at most are sitting in them for 24 hours. Um, and occasionally it's happened that we miss the fact that, that a gecko dug, and we will show what we do to try to make it easier to tell when your gecko does lay eggs. Um, but it happens, occasionally that gets uh, missed, um, and we've had eggs in there for a couple days, and they were perfectly fine and still hatched. So, like I said, you're shooting for wet, um, not sopping wet, but not barely wet. Kind of like, for lack of a better way to describe it, medium wet <laughs> um like holly yeah you'll see i think that that's looking pretty good you'll see it kind of clumps you know when you squeeze it that's a good sign you want it to clump but you don't want to be squeezing like holly take a big can oh, yeah. and squeeze it as There's hard as you no can water see no out. water pouring out you don't want water to pour out but you want it to be wet enough that it clumps um i think and, a little bit more maybe yeah. because as i see some we see a little, couple of dry spots mm -hmm. it's hard to tell on the camera um, I'm going to stay here because I was hungry back. Okay. But it's hard to tell on the camera, but there were a couple of dry spots in there, especially in the bottom as Holly's Oh, yeah, mixing. there you go. Can you see that? Yeah, see a dry there. corner? Yeah. So. so Holly's still mixing in dry spots, so we need a little more water. But that consistency that you saw of what she had at the top and squeezed was what we're looking for. You want it to be wet enough to clump, um, but you don't want to be draining water out of it when you squeeze it real hard. All right. All right. Are you all mixed up? I think so. Cool. So once we're mixed up, uh, what we're going to do now is kind of gently pat down the top. Now, you don't want to press hard because yeah. you want to compact it enough that your geckos can't dig it up. But you want to make yourself a nice flat surface. And tell me when you think that is done, Holly. All right. Mm. Good? Yeah. So yeah. gently flatten it out, basically. Now, hold that to the side. Just kind of tilt it sideways. So you can see how much of the tub we filled up. The, the geckos don't need a lot of space for themselves. Uh, we have found that they really, really like a deep uh, thing of dirt. I'm going to call it dirt, for lack of a better word, to dig into. If you don't have enough in there, we've had issues with them being like, we're not going to lay on our lay box. We're just going to lay randomly somewhere else in our tub. So make sure you have enough dirt in there for them to really dig and get their eggs buried. Uh, and they are okay with not having a lot of space above their head. You'd be surprised how small of a space you really need for them to get down in there. Yeah. As a side note, I will say um, it would probably be good for you. Um, obviously do whatever you want for your setup. But if you have like very basic setup, paper towel on the bottom is a good, um, is a good, um, base flooring for your gecko substrate. because substrate yes sorry i couldn't think of the word because if they don't want to use in here the paper towel is shredded to bits because they're trying to bury so i've noticed that when we've mm. discovered early mm. on that this is that they don't like what we had it set up at the time and the d paper towel is destroyed so um just trying to help you get your eggs you know, yeah. to survive as best possible. Yep, that's a good indicator. Um, another thing is, you know, we do keep paper, everybody on paper towel because it's easier to clean. But um, if you have like a regular substrate, the likelihood is mm -hmm. they're also just going to dig and bury your, their eggs in like mm -hmm. anywhere they want. So true. Um, so anyway, so once you get this tub, the nice thing is, and I'm going to let Holly do this because she has gloves on and I don't feel like getting my hand dirty. <laughs> um, when they start digging, so Holly, your hand's now a gecko. Oh. Dig for eggs. <laughs> See, and then rebury Holly as a gecko does, which is kind of gently. No. Now look, look. So you could tell it's a little messed that it's up. all messed up. The top is not nice and flat anymore like it was. So that is or your. Or you could have this because yeah. they don't. Oh yeah. Not, they're Sometimes very they don't. They don't dig it really well. So, um, the the lightly patting down the top lets you know when your geckos are digging. Now, uh -huh. just because you find digging doesn't mean there's going to be eggs. 
Uh, a lot of times they will dig a couple days before they're about to lay and try to find the right spot and then come back to that spot uh -huh. and lay. So as soon as you see it dug up, check for eggs. If there's no eggs, take your time, make it nice and re-flat again like that. Uh -huh. Gently, gently. We don't want to pack it down so they can't dig it out. It's just a gentle push down, get it flat, and then you'll be able to tell when they're burying their eggs. Uh -huh. One um, final indicator is um, because you're having the lid on the whole time, if there's dirt all over your lid. Yes, you that's, I was going to mention that okay. when, we talk, when I was going to put the lid on too and yep. say the same thing. So your lid should be clean when you put it on. If all of a sudden you're looking in there and you see dirt all over the top, that means they were digging. That's another nice thing about having a nice full lay box is the dirt so close to the top. Mm -hmm. When they dig, they tend to throw the dirt out a little bit so you can find that they're digging already. Mm -hmm. And then all you got to do if you checked it, eggs is, were in there and you've taken them out and you relay the, put the lay box in or just repatted it down once you clean it off completely, yep. if you see it again. And then the last, oh sorry. No, you're fine. Okay. Uh, the last thing I want to cover is how often do you replace this? Um, if you see issues, right? Um, if you start getting mold or anything, go ahead and replace it. Um, occasionally they'll go to the bathroom in it. We just spot clean when they do that. Um, we have personally never had a tub like that we set up like this go, and I'll put it in quotes, go bad, bad. Um, it looks fine all year. We've never had big mold issues or anything else. So we change ours with the start of the breeding season and we will leave them their exact same lay box for the entire breeding season. Um, they will also use this while it's in there. They'll also use it as a moist hide. So even when the breeding season's over, we keep a, a lay box, again, air quotes, lay box, mm -hmm. um, in there as their moist hide for the adults. Um, so they will use it for that. You'll see them in there using it for shedding and stuff too. Um, but uh, we don't replace these, but about once a year, to be honest with you. It's uh, it's just not, we haven't found it to be needed. If there was a good reason, we would. If we saw one that looked mm -hmm. nasty, occasionally um, they will throw out a m enough dirt out of them. There's not much dirt left. We'll go ahead and replace it then. Uh, but otherwise, the start of the breeding season is when we give everybody new lead boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, one final thing is we do, I mean, it doesn't stay you know, damp forever. So yeah. you do have to um, notice if you, um, when you're checking everybody, even when the off season, I'm gonna see why they're tight on this. Um, if it starts to not have this nice rich brown, it starts to get that like dry brown, go ahead and add a little water and re, um, re moisturize and there you go. We, and I will say very, very lightly mist stars just mm -hmm. about every day, very lightly. And we see that if they start, even we do it so light of a misting that they will eventually start drying out. And when they do, then we'll do a heavy mist and a remix. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else before we get back to the I closing thoughts? Good. All right, we'll get back and put the camera back and we will be back with you shortly. So that's our Crested Gecko lay boxes. Really simple, really easy, do it yourself. The supplies are cheap, so it doesn't cost you much to make them. Um, if you don't feel comfortable leaving them for a full year like we do, feel free to refill them, clean them. Uh, we do clean our lids because our lids get really nasty. They, they pee all over them, let's be honest here, pee, poo, whatever. Um, so we do re-clean the lids really, really often and we spot clean inside when they use them as a bathroom instead of a lay box. Um, but otherwise, they, they last about a year for us doing them that way. So it's, it's worked out really well. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else for lay boxes, Holly? No, I think we did a pretty good job of actually making one. Okay. <laughs> Cool. All right, everybody, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. Uh, if this is your first video from us and you're just watching now because you're like, I was looking for a video for Crested Lay Boxes, uh, consider subscribing. We list all of our animals for sale on YouTube first. They stay there for a week before we put them up on Morph Market. So not only as a YouTube subscriber do you get to see the animals first, but you also get a 10% discount if you buy them in the first week. So our YouTube subscribers get uh, exclusive first access to our animals for sale. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate all our subscribers, as always. Y'all have a great weekend. Talk yes. to you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.